Hello, Boogle Boogle Snowball. It's been a while. Are you kidding me? The Sabres won the goddamn draft lottery. Now they've got Jack Eichel and they're gonna get fucking Rasmus Dolan. How the fuck is that? Fi mm. Oh shit, I was recording that. <laughs> oh fuck. Alright, what is up, guys? Buttery Butters here for the first time in a long time. And just to get back into the swing of recording again, I think I'm just going to do a quick little mod spotlight for Terraria, which has been my obsession over the last couple of weeks in between my crazy-ass work schedule. Uh, if you want to know why I wasn't uh, uploading for a while, uh, Maine's internet is absolute shit. Now they have internet that's halfway worth a damn. Unfortunately, it's 75 downloads, 7 uploads, so it's kind of hard to upload quality videos with shit internet, but I'm trying. Anyway, uh, these are the mods I have installed. Some of them are disabled because they conflict with bigger mods, but the big one is Calamity, which many people who are into Terraria have also probably already seen Python, GB, Chippy's Couch Gaming, and Leviathan all do Calamity, and probably Pedwing as well. Those are the four big uh, Terraria YouTubers I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, but I've also got a few other ones installed. Um, Thorium and Tremor are both actually great mods, I just didn't want them alongside Calamity. More Guns is a fun mod. Fargo's uh, Summons and Souls is great for buying boss summoners. Uh, health Bar. Wing Slot, it's a bit broken because it prevents you from getting the achievement for using wings. Zoclean is mostly based around pre-hard mode throwing and some hard mode throwing. Loot Bags allows you to skip some grinding. Alchemist NPC is incredible, uh, a little broken at times. Vein Miter, quality of life. Magic Storage is great, but only ever put Magic Storage in a world if you have every other mod you want installed, because anytime you add a new mod, it crashes Magic Storage. Skyblock is just to avoid grinding. Recipe Browser, it's basically like having the guide in your pocket, it's better. Extra Gunslinger Gear, it's just fun. IMK Sushi is fantastic. Um, the old recipe enabler is actually really good, but I don't have it because magic storage. Louis AFK is great, but also there's a lot of parts of Louis AFK that are really cheesy. So it's like, do you want the convenience of accessories that allow you to dig faster and the ability to build arenas with the click of a button, or do you want to never run out of mana? That's the sort of shit Louis AFK does. More chest loot, just more loot. Reforge armor, because I'm trash at the game and I need all the help I can get. What, which mod is this from, just so I can know what I'm doing. Omni Swing is great, but certain weapons are broken. The Phoenix Blaster mainly. The Phoenix Blaster gets, um, I think Mega Shark level DPS with Omni Swing. So, uh, Calamity Add-on is literally just adds something to disable Revengeance mode. Which, if I do a playthrough on Revenge and Spoon, it's too difficult, that's going to be great. And eventually, they do infinite pouches and quivers for the custom ammo. And the boss checklist, which I have disabled, because for some reason, checking which bosses you're, used, you're up against crashed magic storage for me. But anyway, I'm going to go into my world. I have Buttery McButters, which is my Twitter handle, and Vamp Butters, who I wanted this guy to be more evil. And I've got a couple ones. My test world for Calamity. My fresh start, because I was getting trounced in this one and I got pissed. And a test for revenge mode. So I'm just going to go into this one. Show you a little bit of stuff. Fight a boss or two. Just, you know, give you guys a quick glance of what this mod is all about. Uh, sorry for the jungle music. Uh, I have artificial jungle and mushroom down here. So I am in hard mode. Uh, I think in terms of boss progression, I am at Duke Fishron, including the Calamity bosses. So the only thing I have not done in terms of checklist stuff is the Old One's Army. Uh, then I'd have Duke Fishron, the Cultist, Moon Lord, and post Moon Lord stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is Magic Storage right here. You may wonder what the hell all this is. It's basically each one of these is an upgraded chest. Uh, and the way you make them, uh, you need... Uh, gems, so it actually makes gems worthwhile past the gem hook. And you create a heart, which you connect to storage, storage access, and crafting. And that's pretty damn cool, if I do say so myself. What the hell is in my- oh yeah, the bloomstone. That's pretty cool. 
Anyway, anything that's connected to your star chart, either through a component like this or through connectors like these, will access it. So, all of this stuff is all connected, so they are all in the same inventory system. And this is what I have in my inventory right now. All of that is stuff I have. So instead of feel filling this entire area, instead of, say, with a honey fishing spot, with chests that I need to sort through constantly. But, you know, having all that storage, what does it actually do? It allows you to craft everything from your inventory. It's basically like, if I had my furnace, my anvil, and all my shit here, and like seven chests right here that I had to click and then craft with, it's basically like having all of that for your entire inventory. So that's nice. I, I really like magic storage. When it's not crashing my game, it's probably my overall favorite mod. Uh, Louis AFK adds this, uh, the ability to have the skeleton merchant, I think with 15 gold in your inventory and having encountered, killed a skeleton in the underground, to move in, and the traveling merchant, which I believe is 500 gold, uh, not five, 50 gold, after you first encounter him. So that's nice. Uh, more, uh, here we have the mutant who sells boss summoners. And then over here, also from Fargo's Mutants, we have the Abomination, who sells the Invasion Event Summoners, which is all well and good. Skyblock over there, that's me growing Chlorophyte, so that's great. And all of this, and I'm not even talking about anything for Calamity yet. Over here, we have trophies from Calamitas, which is one of the bosses. Slime God, another one of the bosses. I believe that's a Cryogen trophy right there. Uh, that one, I believe, is a Desert Scourge and a Hive Mind trophy. All of them Calamity bosses. So, yeah, that's nice. I should probably fight some of them, shouldn't I? Uh, if I go over to the Brewer from Alchemist NPC, you can see some of the potions that are added. Fab Souls Vodka, Cadence Potion, Garum Stimulants, Zerg Potion, Zen Potion, Potion of Omniscience, Ninja Potion, and a few others that are non-Calamity buffs that come with uh, Alchemist NPC. And basically, this is like Yarim Stimulants is like combining Iron Skin, Regen, Swiftness, and Endurance in one. And I think it also gives you Wrath and Rage, but it's all in one buff slot. So you don't like take Yarim's uh, Stimulants and get the same buff. So you can actually use it to combine all buffs into one so you don't hit a buff cap. And I have a bunch of other ones in here. Sunshine Potions are my favorite. They illuminate everything around you like it's sunlight, which is why. I've got so much of the map uncovered, basically. Like, all that part, like, if you see, this is where I fall down for my elevator. I haven't explored any of this, and it's all lit up because of the Sunshine Potion. It's great. Uh, again, that's, I don't know, is Sunshine a Calamity Potion? It'll say non-Calamity if it isn't. Oh, it's a non-Calamity buff. That's a damn shame. Anyway, I have just beaten in this uh, world the Plaguebringer Goliath twice, and it's a really fun fight. And I've got some uh, the Ruthless P90 here, that's a Calamity weapon, the Conclave Crossfire, the Impaler, the Astral Blaster, the Ballista, and the Astral Repeater. They're all Calamity mo uh, weapons, I'm pretty sure. Yep, the True Paladin's Hammer is also one. It's basically an upgraded Paladin's Hammer. I, of course, have my picks off. Louis AFK adds the loot magnet. It's dropped from the uh, Wall of Flesh. Basically, you hold this up, and any loot that's available in your world will come flying at you over time. Which is great if you're, like, say, in a mob farm and you don't want to leave it to pick up all your loot. Uh, the money collector is also Louis AFK. It automatically places any money you pick up in your bank. I haven't lost money in this playthrough yet because of that. Uh, the Cosmolite is a hard mode thing from Calamity. Daytime, nighttime. Daytime, nighttime. No mana required. Fantastic. Uh, do I have any boss summoners in here? Say the Eye of Cthulhu. I have two mechanical eyes so I can fight the twins. But the twins don't change much unless you're in revengeance mode. See, that's the thing about Calamity. There is revengeance in death mode. Revengeance mode makes everything more difficult, makes mobs hit harder, makes mobs take less damage, makes you take more damage. Uh, let's see, it makes it gives extra phases to all bosses, it increases the difficulty of all bosses by increasing their movement speed and HP and their defense in all of their phases, no matter what. Sorry, bunny! <laughs> uh, but yeah, 
Revenge mode also, I think, triples the amount of money you gain. So it's great for making money, but it's also ridiculously difficult, and don't try it unless you know how to play Terraria, which is why I am... Stupid zombie. That's why I'm on Expert, and I am not on Revengeance. Death mode does not affect any mobs. It makes bosses about ten times harder by giving every boss another phase to deal with, as opposed to just the extra phase Revengeance mode gives them. It also makes them deal more damage, gives them more defense, and massively boosts their HP. I think the Eye of Cthulhu has 3000 HP uh, in Expert. Man, recording really drops my FPS. That was the Paladin's Hammer, by the way. Uh, yeah, recording really drops my FPS, holy hell. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I think regular Eye of Cthulhu has 3,000 HP uh, in expert mode. Revengeance mode has 9,000, and I'm pretty sure death mode Eye of Cthulhu has something stupid like 30,000 HP. It, like, I'm pretty sure the um, the destroyer, the mechanical worm, I'm pretty sure he's got something like 300,000 HP in death mode. It's ridiculous. But yeah, I think I'm just going to... I'd say the highlight of Calamity is the armor, the weapons, and the bosses. And I'm wearing a set of the armor right now. I've got a Taxia armor in my social slot, which is fantastic. It's a, a hell-based armor. Blazing explosions and chaos bolts, inferno effects, and all that fun stuff. And then the astral one, it's like per having permanent danger, treasure, and uh, enemy sense. And causes uh, stars to fall. And I think I'm just going to test out my Conclave Crossfire that has Acid Arounds, which is another Calamity one, against the Eye of Cthulhu, or rather the Twins, because they gave me a ton of trouble the first time. I'm not even going to buff up for them. Oh, hi, Dad. Uh, let's see, what, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, this is the Impaler. It's the upgraded Stake Launcher that is in Calamity. As you can tell, it's doing a rather stupid amount of damage per second. The Astral Blaster here, you only get this after Astrum Dea, so it's a reasonably late hard mode weapon, but it does a lot of damage and it homes in, which is great. Oh, I normally go after Spasmatism first, okay. Uh, in Revengeance mode, the eyes, um, you will only, um, be able to get, uh, uh, do damage to one eye when the other eye is in second form. So if uh, Retinazer was still alive, I would not be able to damage Spasmatism until Retinazer was in second form. Uh, let's see, what do I want to try? The Astral Repeater with Chlorophyte Arrows. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, you're nothing. Man, the Electrosphere Launcher does a lot of damage. But my favorite so far is easily the P90. Ah, you suck. And you're melted. Boop. Yeah, the, uh, uh, this, this mod's fun. But that's not even a modded boss. I should show you some of the modded bosses. Uh, let's see. I have a decent amount of money, so I guess I could just show you, uh, the Desert Scourge, even though he's pre-hard mode. Kravulon, who is also pre-hard mode. What else? Uh, I don't have... Uh, corruption here, so I get. I mean, I have corruption, so I guess I'll show you the hive mine. God damn. Uh, I'll also show you the slime god, which is a really fun fight. And then I think after that, I will show you guys Cryogen, who's an ass. Brimstone Elemental before he gets muffed, and I will end with Calamitas, even though Plaguebringer Goliath is really fun. Actually, you know what? Okay, I'll do Plaguebringer Goliath, too. So, let's see, who was first? The first one on the list would be the Desert Scourge. He's the first one in the boss checklist. I think he's the same tier as King Slime. So, let's go ahead and make it... Make it high. Make it daytime. There we go. And I'm just going to run over to my desert. Eat some pie, because of course... My desert is corruptified, sadly. But I'm pretty sure he can spawn in a corrupt desert. And there's no sandstorm, which is great, so... Yep, there he is! Just listen to this music. That is the Desert Scourge. He's basically a big-ass worm. He resists piercing damage in Revengeance mode, and grenades are virtually useless against him. Just 
just want to do some damage, make sure he doesn't lose interest. In Revengeance mode, he spawns three smaller versions of himself, and in Death mode, they all have more damage, and I think in Death mode is when he shoots sand out of himself, like the uh, Expert mode, Eater of Worlds Vile Spit. So let's just go ahead and melt him. <laughs> but he's pretty cool. As, as he takes damage, he also spawns those little tiny guys. And what's great about the Desert Scourge is he's great for farming money er early because he's reasonably easy to fight once you have the right ooh, loot bag. Once you have the right stuff, and his treasure bag contains the fishing loot you get from the fishing quest, which is huge, massive time saver. Oh, hi, Corruptor. All right, uh, I have not visited my underground mushroom biome since I defeated um, Crabulon, so let's go ahead and do that real fast. Oh, hi! I just remembered. Fuck you, Perennial. You got in my way from the last time. Perennial Ore is a new... Um... New thing added to the game by Calamity. It is, I believe, Perennial... What tier is that again? I think it takes a Pickaxe Axe, so it's post-Skeletron Prime. But, at least in the current version of Calamity, it spawns on World Generation. I think... In the next version of Calamity, it will spawn when Skeletron Pine is defeated. I died on that shit. <laughs> uh, you may notice this is a little bit weird. It's because I had to home, home make my own mushroom biome, because I couldn't find a naturally spawning one. Shit. Alright. So let's just go ahead and spawn Crabulon. Crabulon starts passive. He starts passive, but if you leave him alone long enough, he will start to attack you. Anyway, um, basically he jumps around and, yep, there he goes, fires mushroom spores at you. And as you damage him, he fires off these bigger spores, which is really cool. Uh, he gets faster and faster as he loses health, and if he can't get to you, he will start phasing through blocks in order to get to a point where he can jump at you. He spawns way, way more of the little mushrooms in Revengeance mode, and he's got a ton more HP. I think he spawns more minions, and the minions are harder in death mode. So let's just go ahead and melt him. But this is fantastic music. That's another reason this mod is so great. The music in this mod is fantastic. He actually did some pretty decent damage to me. Boop. He also drops, drops some really cool stuff, especially he drops a throwing weapon, which is fantastic, called the Mycelium Claws. Or, no, the Micro. He drops the Micro. It's, it's basically like... Um, a pre-hard mode throwing version of the Fetid Bag. It's, it's fantastic. And it makes throwing close range very viable, especially against the Destroyer. Uh, I guess the next modded boss on the list is the Hive Mind, who is a post-Eater of Worlds thing, so I guess it's time to go to some corruption. Oh yeah, there's corruption past that. I should show you something else real quick. I know traveling sucks in Terraria. Burden Breaker. It is a hard mode item made with the boss souls of the three mech bosses and uh yeah it does not limit your acceleration 1000 and something miles per hour it's a little crazy anyway uh the perf no, the perforator slash the hive mind will spawn in your world's evil biome after you've defeated uh, either the Brain of Cthulhu or the Eater of Worlds, and it will be summoned. You can either make the summoner, or you can try to find a Hive Cyst or a Perforator Cyst, and they have 2,000 HP. And destroying either of them will cause that world's boss to spawn. And... Oh shit, no! No, 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 no! I am not ready for the cultists in this playthrough. Okay. Now that's taken care of, let's try to either find a cyst... Hey, corrupt slimes. I'm either going to try to find a cyst or summon her. As you can tell, I've flattened this area out pretty well. You don't really need an arena this flat for hive mind, but for perforators, a flat arena really helps. I had to home... Like, this was my... This was my natural hollow, by the way. And it can't spread through snow. So, yeah. 
I dug this trench to prevent the corruption from spreading, and it stopped the hollow from spreading, which is great. Oh my god, slime, stop it! Terra Termia summons the hive mind. That is what we're looking for. Alright, let's summon the hive mind a little further away from the hollow, shall we? There we go. He's stationary when he spawns, when you lower his HP fully, he will start to teleport around. He spawns these guys, dink creepers, they attack you, and when they die, at least in expert mode, they drop behind these rain clouds, which are really reminiscent of the Crimson Rod. And when he teleports, he begins firing. Yep, he fires these little things at short range, and he also... Most of his damage comes from the minions he fires. Because he'll still spawn these little bolts and these dank creepers as his health uh, drops, and they will slowly home in on you. He'll teleport away as he takes damage. But if you let him hit you, he will do a lot of damage. And he's dead. Really should not be showing you guys these bosses when I am this OP. Ooh, Eater's Hold Bear. Ooh, let's just get rid of all this shit. I believe next on the boss checklist, get out of here, is the Overloaded Sludge, which is the Slime God. Now, the Slime God could actually kill hard mode players. So, I may be playing on Expert and not Revengeance, but he's not one to take lightly, and he requires a relatively long arena, even in normal mode, let alone uh, Expert, Revengeance, or Death. You want a relatively long arena for him, so I think I'm actually going to use the arena I have at home. Give me that essence of Elium. So yeah, I'm going to see you guys back at my arena. Okay, we're back at my arena. Uh... Ignore the tombstones. Which one was this one? Mothron? Ah, memories. Pink laser. Uh, I can't remember what that was from. Flaming wood. Ah, I could have sworn it was the pumpkins that killed me that. Uh, never mind. Anyway, uh, I actually brought a couple buff potions because slime god's dangerous. Uh, just regen, iron skin, and heart reach because uh, you'll see why I want heart reach in a few seconds. But... I'm not going to use my actual huge buffs. I really should put the Bloomstone away. But, yeah. I actually summoned Ravens for this, and that might be a little overkill. That right there is the Slime God, that little guy. And he is guarded by the Crimulian and the Ebolian Slime Gods. And they fire blobs of shit at you that damage you, and they can debuff you. And the Slime God himself will debuff you if he touches you. He will give you the same debuff, I think, as the Vortex Pillar guys. It's a gravitation debuff. It'll make you do like this. Anyway, uh, the uh, the Crimson and the uh, Ebolian, uh, I believe, They what they do is they curse. And I think, yeah, one curses and one causes, uh, I think, uh, something similar to Frostburn. The red guys are the ones that do similar to Frostburn. And the, uh, the purple guys are the ones that curse. And you can't damage the slime god until you destroy these guys. And they split off into multiples as their health gets lower. Uh, but uh, the little guys drop Nazars. So if you're running, uh, if you need something to... I think it's actually um, a bit of a crutch. If you don't have a Nazar at this point... Yep, there's that debuff. Yeah, if you don't have a Nazar at this point, these little guys will drop in and it'll stop you from being cursed by these purple guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, you may have just noticed there, if you're underneath these guys, they'll fire shit down at you, but they actually cannot get below you. But as you can tell, the Slime God, at least in Expert Road, doesn't have a ton of HP, but he's fast and he's really hard to hit. And I don't know, but I think the little slimes occasionally drop HP, uh, not HP, uh, they drop hearts occasionally. But the thing about... There we are, he's dead. But yeah, the thing that's most challenging about the Slime God is when he's in that stage, if you don't have a fast summon, like, well, Ravens are really OP for this stage of the game. Or, yeah, if you don't have a fast summon or um, really quick reflexes or um, close range weapons that, you know, accuracy doesn't really matter with, like uh, B nades or something like that, uh, when he debuffs you and you're stuck like this and you can't dash or get out of the way, 
the debuff ends just as he's right about where my mouse cursor is, or I'm not sure if I can actually see my mouse cursor, it's been a while since I recorded it. But he's basically where the ravens are lagging behind me when your debuff ends, so it's really hard to avoid him when he's about to ram you and give you the debuff again. Slime God is actually really, really difficult. It's actually... It was nerfed a while ago, and before it was nerfed, it was actually like... You can fight him pre-hard mode, but he was around the same tier as Cryogen. And speaking of Cryogen, I think it's time to go to the, um... Uh, I think it's time to go places and see uh, Cryogen, because that guy was an asshole, and I want some vengeance. I explain shit way too much from Mod Spotlight. I might split this into multiple videos, actually. Actually, you know what? I think I will do that. Those were pre-hard mode bosses for Calamity. And I think in the second episode, I will do hard mode bosses for Calamity. Again, these are in expert mode, and, uh, yeah. The post-Moon Lord ones are in a tier of their own, so I'm not even, I haven't even seen them yet. So, there's that. But I've beaten every single uh, pre-Moon Lord uh, boss for Calamity, so I'll just make that its own video. So, yeah. See you guys next time.